Piggy Park is the earlier piece. And it's an oil, and I did, I was having a show with uh, Jenny Newell when she had a gallery here, and I was doing, I was living in Atlanta, and I came back, and I spent a few days in the city, stayed in the motel across the river, um, and just drove around and took pictures and pictures and pictures and pictures of everything that caught my eye. And of course, Piggy Park is iconic for any number of reasons. And it wasn't that I needed to put a sign in there. I just wanted the, the intensity of the, of the place and all its emanations. Um, and it was an, it's done in oil, which I wasn't working in at the time, but I just wanted to, to keep it nice and loose and, and uh, fluid and, and have that kind of feeling about it. The other piece, uh, a snake handler, um, I did later and uh, was at a time when I decided to move from doing architectural pieces, which I did a lot of, into things that involve um, human beings much more. For a long time, I didn't put any people in the paintings. There was an understanding that there were people there, but they didn't need to be shown. Um, the building showed the effects of the people around them. And then at a certain point, I, I ran across a couple of painters here, and they just did architectural pieces so much better. And I said, I cannot do this. I can't keep up with these guys. Or the, what they have is so much better. So I decided to go to people. And then there was a show uh, put on at McKissick by, uh, I think, Mary Gilkerson was in, in charge of it. And it, it was called Fool for Art. And it was a fundraiser for McKissick. And I thought, well. David, stop taking yourself so seriously, you know. Do some things with uh, people and, and, you know, make some fun of yourself. Lighten up, you know. This is, life's too short. Um, so I, I started this long run of doing people um, in situations which were usual or unusual and just initially working just out of my head. Like that piece, I didn't use a model for it. And it's a, if you get critical about it, you know, you can you see that there's no model used, obviously. But it was about uh, energy and feeling and uh, just, you know, this is the South, so they're snake handlers. They're not us usually riding unicycles, but uh, I figured, why not? Well, you know, snakes, uh, you, you got snake handlers in, in rural uh, uh, Pentecostal churches, you've got uh, snake handlers in the Bible, you've got snakes as in all kinds of mythology. Um, the snake is the, the creature in the beginning, um, not necessarily in the Bible, but in all kinds of other uh, cultures and mythologies. It's a, it's a powerful symbol. And to throw him in with this human being who, who uh, thinks he knows what he's doing and knows how to handle things um, and put him on a unicycle, just make it a little, make it all kind of tenuous and, and a little bit dangerous and slightly ridiculous and have fun with it. All right, my father, Edmund Yajin, was born in Armenia in, uh, I think that I've, I saw something that said 1904. So he, he began drawing and painting fairly early on, and he was, he was naturally good at it. My father's work in the, in the State Museum collection, there are two pieces that I'm aware of. The one of the State Fair is probably from the 70s, I think. I'm not certain. It's a realistic painting, a figurative painting, in the manner of his early oils, in that he's working from references, and it's a night scene as well, which makes it, uh, gives it a little more glow. Uh, allows for the lights to speak. And the other uh, piece of his in the, in the collection is a, when he came to Columbia, one, he was an Armenian, two, he was from the north, he had this strange name, three, he was an artist, his wife was from the north, from New Jersey, my God. Um, they were not exactly locals, so they were somewhat set apart even if only in their own minds. What stood out to him, having lived in, in metropolitan areas for the, most of his life, was uh, he would walk around the city and he would see these areas, as, like the one depicted in the, in the painting, 
but it would have been downtown. It may have been around Park Street. It may have been close to Assembly, and probably in the Fourth Ward. African-American houses and people in their neighborhood, and the color appealed to him, the, the intimacy of their lifestyle appealed to him, the fact that they were other appealed to him. He was other. He was outside the main culture. So what the, their biggest influence was, um, was felt by being in a house where there were paintings on the wall, real paintings on the wall, not reproductions, um, and just sitting with those year in and year out and, and looking and being involved with them. And, and I like to think of inhabiting paintings. So, that, you know, you're there and you know this painting and you feel the layers and you feel the uh, atmosphere. Um, and it's intriguing and inviting and um, Eventually, I, I, I saw how I watched myself in the process of drawing and painting and became uh, enamored of it, and so much so that I thought, this is, what I, this is what I want to do. But it took a while. It wasn't until I was in college that I really um, decided this is what I want to do. Before, it was sort of assumed that I could do it, and I sort of sloughed it off and said, well, I can do that, you know. But, when I did get involved with it, I said, "This okay, this feeds me. And maybe because it feeds me, it can offer something to other people.